Adam deep offense where you just run at people. They didn't fire off real good. That offensive line has to come off to make the uh, running game go. Well, that's the end of the first quarter here at Notre Dame with the score. The Air Force 6, Notre Dame nothing. Sat down with mom, talk to dad. Can't get it together, makes you feel sad. You know you can do it, you wonder where. You want it soon. Green continues to come down here in Notre Dame, Indiana. The Air Force leading Notre Dame 6 0 as we go out into the second quarter. Play Notre Dame's ball, second down and seven at about the 50 yard line. Scott Groom still quarterback in the Irish. Getting his chance here today with Berlin injured. Gives it tailback Pickett. Pickett trying to find an opening up the middle. Not much of a crease there. Hit by John Ziegler, the right tackle, and Mike Chandler, an inside linebacker with Terry Mackey helping out for the Air Force defense. Their number seven is Steve Berlin, who came up with a sh shoulder separation last week against Miami. He was the key man, important to the Notre Dame hopes this year, taking over quarterback. Well, you saw him signaling the plays in from sideline, getting it from the offensive coaches upstairs, relayed to him. He gives a signal. Brown and Howard are the wide receivers here for Notre Dame. Inside handoff to the fullback, Smith, on a fake pitch out. And Smith is very close to first down. Matter of fact, I think he's got it down the Air Force 42-yard line before Scott Thomas can stop him. It is. First down for Notre Dame. Well, those last three players on this first down drive now, Jim. Again, the offensive line is firing out, and they're going straight at people. Watch the line come off the line of scrimmage down here and go straight ahead into people. You see them? They pulled a guard there, got a loud side block. Here comes uh, Smith up through there, making air. That's what they have to do to run the ball. They're not going to make a living running outside. Take advantage of their, their weight advantage. The guards are 276 and 277. Tackles 272 and 274. There's a fumble again. And... Grooms is able to cover it for Notre Dame. Take the short loss, but hang on to the football. Well, that's a wet ball, and, and again, the new the new quarterback, he probably hasn't worked that much with, with Kelly up to this week, and that little center quarterback exchange and repetition is a little different feel the way each quarterback puts his hands underneath the center. Certainly puts Grooms on a little bit of a hole, having to start this series now second and 12 at the 44. Well, Jim Aston was in there, too, for Notre Dame. He's playing place of Larry Williams right now, right guard. Back to the eye, they pitch to the pick, it's been the bread and butter play. Turns outside, crosses the 40 and down to the 37. Gets it back about five yards of the play. Dwan Wilson and Scott Thomas. Chris Smith was out leading the block that time for number 20, Pickett, the All-American. Well, it's just a pitch return, pitched out, got the lead blocker going in going front of him. You see Pinkett all by himself, trying to break, make a little move inside, trying to get back out the outside. They get low and underneath him and take those legs out from underneath him. You know, Pinkett had the uh, surgery, and uh, there's some of thinking maybe he's not quite as quick as he used to. He's not having the year he had a year ago, but he's still a dangerous back. Third down and six to go for another day. Grooms almost slips. Grooms fires downfield, man, this there is War Brown, and he's got it for a first down inside the Air Force 20-yard line. Well, the first two times he went back to pass, he had people open, and I, and I believe this young man can throw the ball, they can make some yardage pass, and here you go, see Pickett coming out, looking at it from down, the way you see it in the trenches there, rolling out to the outside, now when he gets outside, difficult pass to throw, going to your left, throwing back across your body, does an excellent job of getting that in there to Brown. Notre Dame's averaging 187 yards a game passing if they maintain that it'll be the best since the championship year of 1977 here at Notre Dame first down play inside the 20 now Grooms on the quick sideline pass again he hits Brown on the quick one but that'll be a pickup of only about two or maybe three yards of the most Pat Malakowski was over there covering at his outlet linebacker post. But that might have been another audible by Grooms. No question the audible to that, and no question now that, you know, his inexperience is showing a little bit. He's looking there. The Air Force outside linebacker, as the audible started moving out there and almost took that play away from him. Pick up a three, second and seven. Ball now at the Air Force 16-yard line. Notre Dame could take the lead with a touchdown and point after pick it. Nothing doing. A yard, maybe as Air Force now is giving more grudgingly. Larry Nicholas, the nose guard, smelled out that play. And he came in to make the stop. Short of the 15-yard line. Okay, wait. So now Notre Dame's going to come up with a big player here on third down, or maybe we'll have to go with a field goal. It's third and six at the 15-yard line. Biggest play of the game so far with the Irish. Grooms 
Groves being chased out of the pocket. Now Groves is going to run with it, and he gets the first down, I think. He's down inside the 10, and he may be about a yard short, and here will be a decision now for the Notre Dame staff. Groves chased out of the pocket, almost got it in. Going to be awful going to be awful close over there. It looks like he did, didn't make it. Now he's chased out of the pocket. He has to make a decision. Now he turns and runs. Knows where that marker is. Should lower his head, but missed it by about a hell, oh, maybe half a foot, Jim. So it's fourth down, less than a yard to go for Notre Dame. And Faust is going to go for it. Now here's where those big linemen may come through for, Noel, for the Irish. Mark Brooks is in at fullback. They got two fullbacks, Smith and Brooks in front of Pickett. They need less than a yard. They give it to Pickett, and Pickett dives in there behind his left guard, Tim Scandal, and I think he's got the first down. Oh, it's going to be close. It is going to be close. Looked like he lost his footing going in there, Jim. I'm not so sure now. Okay, we may have to measure. Let's see now as they unstack. They put the ball down around the vicinity of the nine-yard line, eight and a half yard. They had to get the eight and a half. Ball is just inside the nine. This is going to be an important measurement here for both these teams. Air Force needs stick nothing. Notre Dame is down there. Here's the chain down, and it's first down for Notre Dame. First and goal to go at the eight-yard line of the Air Force. Well, Ed, I understand we've got some viewers down in Kingston, Jamaica, watching the telecast of this game. One of your old high school players, Larry Mason, just for to say he's watching down in Jamaica. I hope the Jamaican fans stick around and enjoy the other game tonight coming up as LSU entertains Vanderbilt in a key Southeastern Conference game of Baton Rouge. Now first and goal for Notre Dame. Four plays to get it in. Here comes Grooms. Grooms back getting up the middle and a tight end and he fumbles the ball out of bounds. Mark Bavaro, the tight end, came across in motion and took a little shovel pass. Well, that's the old, that's the old Jack Curtis shovel pass, but he used it with the with the tight end. See, come around, the, it shovels it right up to him. Now, Bavaro may have been better off if he had turned up field here and made some yardage. He's trying to run like a halfback, and he's a big 235-pound backer who carried the ball in the wrong hand on the inside arm instead of the outside arm. Well, he was fortunate that he was close to the boundary. The ball just went out of bounds. Brooks comes back in at fullback, and Notre Dame goes back to its power backfield. Second and goal now at the Air Force two-yard line. Pickett hit at the two and driven back. Alan Pickett stopped this time of the Air Force defense. John Sickler is the first guy to greet him. And then he got a lot of assistance from the claws, they call the Falcon defense, especially from A.J. Scott and Pat Malikowski. And a lot of times, Jim, the blockers, you know, people say the line isn't blocking anybody. But this time, Pinkett did not stay with the hole. That play was there. He might have, if he'd have stayed inside, lowered his head, he might have made a yard, too. But he didn't open quick. He tried to go to the outside and consequently lost yardage. Third down at about the two-and-a-half-yard line. Notre Dame trying to get in. And there's uh, Grooms on the play action. Fake throws the end zone incomplete. Trying to hit the barrel, the tight end. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down again. And Notre Dame may be forced to go for the three. Well, Pavaro was wide open to come with the play action, take the running play. Pavaro delayed, then went out into the flat. He just overthrew the ball. There's Grooms. You can see him. He's staring over the sidelines where the word must come from Jerry Faust. What do you do here? And out comes the field goal unit. So John Carney will try to come in and cut the Air Force lead in half. Carney is six for six this year at field goals. He's had one as long as 44 yards, and this should be a piece of cake right here. Just a little chippy of about uh, 20 yards. Ball's at the two and a half yard line of the Air Force. Uh, Notre Dame may want to talk it over. Well, I would I would think Call so. Call timeout. I, I would think they might want to think about this a little bit, although they had let the 30 second clock run down. They were going to get penalized five yards. They, they waste, if they kick it, they're wasting a timeout because the, the, the extra five yards in this field position doesn't mean anything. Now, this is kind of a tough decision for Coach Fouts. He's sitting down there with the ball you know, on the two-yard line. If he doesn't make it, okay, if you want to think defensively, Air Force got a long way to go. You may get good field position again. Settling for three points puts you in a position that the, the field goal, another one, would just tie the ball game. So I'm not quite sure. This is a tough decision. Obviously, the fans always want you to go for it. Well, they're leaving Carney out there. Fisher DeBerry now has got to think maybe some fake is a distinct possibility here. And here comes Grooms back on the field. So the quarterback Grooms comes back in. Notre Dame's going to go for it. So Faust, who's endured a lot of second guessing here at Notre Dame the last three years, has put himself on the line here. They're going to go for the touchdown. 
in the first half with 10 and a half minutes to go to halftime and Air Force leading 6 nothing. If they fail here, Ed, Air Force is going to be backed up inside its own two-yard line. I think this is an excellent decision by Jerry Faust. Whether they make it or not, you know, they've got to decide now. Don't say after the players whether you like the decision. I think it's an excellent decision. If they make it, they've got a chance to go ahead in the ball game. If they don't make it, as you said, Air Force is really backed up. This football team needs a lift. Their fans need a lift. They need to have something good happen to them. A field goal is really almost like settling for I, nothing. I think Air Force has called a timeout. So Air Force, uh, Fisher DeBerry has called a timeout. Uh, he's going to make sure he sets up. This is a very big play here for both these teams. If uh, Faust is Irish, gets the ball in the end zone here and takes the lead, no doubt they're going to pick up the momentum. But there's, by the same token, and as clearly, if Air Force can stop them, they will, of course, be able to, to maintain the momentum of this game. Well, that's exactly right. And, of course, that's the stuff that's going on. Uh, they had their field goal block team on, was forced to take a timeout uh, when Notre Dame sent their offensive team back on field. There's Faust, and here's Grooms. His first start ever for Notre Dame, although he's a senior, played the shadow this year of Steve Berline, and uh, he was the shadow of Keel before that, came here as a freshman five years ago, transferred back to Miami, Ohio, then changed his mind again, returned to Notre Dame. You got it. You got to make a decision, run or pass, Jim. Well, Pinkett is set out in a slot now, and they've got only one running back, Smith, behind Grooms. Howard is to the right. Here comes Jackson in motion for the right. And here comes Grooms, going to pass on fourth down. Grooms, his hit gets away, fires the end zone, touchdown, caught by Jackson. Oh, what a play by Grooms, got away from the tackler, looked like he might be sacked, and he just drilled that ball to Milt Jackson, and Notre Dame takes the lead. Oh, this was a gutsy call that took it. Now, you see Grooms come out here, he shows the strength of his arm. There's no one open right now, he's looking around, now he drills this in, a lot of people, breaks a tackle, now this is drilled right in there. Jackson makes an excellent catch in the end zone, gutsy call, excellent play execution. The Irish needed that for their fans and their own football team. Well, that was super coverage. But